Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me in another of my wonderful interviews. As chance might happen, another podcaster should be circling the area uh, like a, a wonderful man he is. And he said, Richard, I'd love to drop in and see your setup and say hello and have a cup of tea and maybe have chips on the beach. And I said, I'm out that day. He said, too late, I'm here. Today, the wonderful uh, one and only Chris Brooks is here. Hello, Chris. Hello. I don't know which camera to look at. <laughs> well, nice. multi cameras And anyway, that's a lie. You told me you, you were washing your hair. Oh, yes, I was washing my hair. And um, unfortunately, it all went down the plug hole. That's because you used wash and go. I did. It was too 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 much for me. Well, uh, I thought it was worth getting you into, you know, you've looked at the studio because mm. uh, you do yours, LSB Productions. Uh, well worth checking it out, by the way. Brilliant content, of course. Um, but we both share uh, something that's happened to the pair of us over the last few months that is beyond our control, I suppose, um, and that is we've both been defunded. Yeah, it's ridiculous, really, because you think of... Well, I, I look at quite a few YouTubers and some of their content, I would say, is far more risque than what, yeah. we, what we put out. So I don't. I just don't understand why they're picking on us. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, exactly. Um, and it is very difficult because it's hard to know where the line is. That's the thing. I mean, with mine, um, it was like you put out too much misinformation, medical misinformation. That's it. Same with the bands. Um, have you been actually banned? No, I haven't been banned. I've just been demonetized. And the reason that they gave me was I put up harmful content. Right. Sensitive. Sensitive, yeah. And, and and did they tell you which one it was? No. Which is ridiculous because that, I mean, this is the problem that we have. If, if you knew where the line was and what would be deemed as, um, then you could say, OK, I won't do that again mm. because obviously what's the point? I don't want to be defunded or demonetized or whatever. But if you end up, I'm struggling here to get these cameras doing what they're supposed to do because the microphone's in the way of the buttons. Um, and, and that's the other thing. When you get banned and you can appeal, um, but you don't get the chance to say, what is it in the video you don't like? Because I'll edit that out or I'll just drop the video anyway. Mm. Uh, they just kick you off. Yeah. And no, they don't. They don't give you any. I mean, because this, this is the second time that I've been demonetized because I'm hardcore. Oh right. No, the first so what time. The first time. Really? The first time, and that I can understand. It's because then I was. I don't. This is really unnatural to me. All this face to camera stuff. Right. I'm always used to being, being behind, the, behind camera. the camera, and so I was sharing videos of like council meetings yes so i was just pulling one video from i don't know norfolk council and putting it onto my channel because it would get more views on my channel than it would on the actual place yes. and obviously i'm just trying to share what's being said but they just said you need to change it and mix it up so it's not you've you've added to it it's not the original video you've made it, it this your, is what your youtube own. said yeah oh, right. and so that goes against their partnership policies where basically you're just copying other people's stuff oh i see so i can understand that which is why i then started doing like thought of the day videos and, and yes. just making the videos more where i've edited and put my touch to it yes obviously that's not what i was doing then so i got a Smack on the hand for that. And you show... But uh, at least they told me what the issue was. Yeah, well, that, I know. So I, I could I... then go back and say, right, well, I need to change it how I do it. Yes. But this time round, they just said it's harmful content. They couldn't point out which video, because like I said, well, surely if something you've deemed as harmful, why is the video still up? Yes. Why haven't you taken that down if it's harmful? Well, well I mean, on my bands, they just immediately take them down. Uh, or they're there, but they say, say you can appeal, but it's not available to the public. So you can say, actually, the reason I, you know, I think this video should stand is because this, this and this. Um, and then every time they've said, well, we're not, we don't believe you. <laughs> we're not doing it. And, and, and I just think, well, but if I knew, I, I, it was fine, take it down. And I won't do a video like that again. 
or I'll avoid the words that you didn't want me to say or the misinformation you, you think that I'm saying. I'm happy to do that as long as I can carry on doing what I'm doing. But Well, I mean, you, you, you look at every walk of life. If you were an office worker and you did something wrong, they would pull you up on it and mm. they would tell you what you did wrong. Yes, how are you supposed to learn otherwise? And that's the same with any company that... Yeah anyone works for I imagine would be the process this is what you did wrong you need to change that but with YouTube it's like oh no, no, we, don't, we don't like that and I guess that's because they've got the foothold they've got the numbers everybody uses YouTube first I mean there are the other platforms that we can go to and no disrespect to those platforms it's very useful to have them but YouTube have got the reputation of being the well they've got like what is it over a billion subscribers to yeah. YouTube so, so what does that tell you about um, channels that they're, they're, you know, they're, they're not exactly worried if we disappear, mm. which is a shame. So, so how does it make you feel when you've been defunded? Um, because from my point of view, it was like, oh, OK, I've got now used to making content. I've become self-employed doing this over a long, long time and slowly, slowly crept up to the point where it was making me, I didn't need to have to go and do any other work. I used to do corporate entertaining and that kind of thing. Mm. And um, now I don't need to do any of that. And corporate videos I used to do, but no, I didn't have to do I could focus on the channel. And then all of a sudden, with no warning, really, about the money side of things, the carpet's whipped out from underneath you. And you're going, oh, they've given me three months. I can reapply. Mm. Well, I mean, for me, the issue is yes i was earning some money on youtube I, I wasn't earning enough where i could put my feet up and go oh mm. relax i was trying to build the channel yeah and so for me it's a case of you've kind of nipped it in the bud before i've even got going yes i <laughs> know uh, no but exactly and that's the whole thing is i mean I, in some respects it's because anybody can go on and and do stuff it is quite good that you earn your stripes i suppose by bringing subscribers to you viewers to you improve your content and and the incentive is oh there's a little bit more money now and then you get to a point where you think okay i've now kind of learnt my trade i've worked out my niche it's earning lots of money and i'm doing well, not lots of money but it's earning money you know that's what i mean and then suddenly again without without warning i get the bans but the demonetization just seemed to be I don't know, a stick too far. Well, yeah, it is, especially when they can't verify why. Yeah, because, I, I mean, they are making money out of you. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I mean... They, they make more money out of you than yeah. you make. Exactly, that's right. So Even when you are monetized. So you, you know, and especially if you... Um, I mean, I know you're, you've got a smaller channel, but you would think that if you re reached a certain range where they'd sent you out one of these wherever it is the, the thing that plaque, the plaque thing plaque. that they send you you'd think that then if they are, are going to lose you as a, a youtuber or at least de defund you or whatever which may make you give up you may just say well sod this i'll go and do something else um, you'd think that perhaps a person an actual would you know would ring you up or be in touch with you and say look we don't want to lose you we may not agree with all your content but you have an audience but these are the areas that you should not mm. tread into because our policy really doesn't handle it uh, very well. Mm. But they don't. No. And, and I do think that perhaps maybe there's a spy within the community. Well, reporting. Give it, giving no names, but mm. yeah, I think that we both have similar audiences. So, yeah, I, I think that there might be some skullduggery going on as mark taylor would say skullduggery i'm sure there is i mean i you know i look at my my um uh, comments and there's plenty of people out there who for whatever reason don't like what i do or challenge everything that i do and that's fine i don't mind that but you get to a point where some of them blatantly don't like you and you do ask well why do you watch there are so many other channels to watch and yet they they just want to um, have a go at you and and I guess that just comes with the territory yeah I think we have to accept that there's always going to be haters that hate whether it's for a legitimate reason or not 
you just have to brush that off mm. and just go with the tide, really, don't you? Yeah. I mean, the whole point for going back to the demonetization, it's just, for me, it's it's not having the the oomph to mm. get creating because you think, why am I doing this? <laughs> the, the incentive um, goes out. Yeah. Um, to to carry on creating content because it's very difficult to you, you can't keep asking the audience to donate. Mm. Um, as by the way, if you wish to yeah, donate, if you wish to donate, a, then we both <laughs> you know, we've got various links on our website. We don't want to work in a factory. Yeah, we don't <laughs> exactly. Um, and the thing is, we've spent our lives sort of trying to hone and and do our skills such as they may be which is obviously communicating things and and trying to disseminate what's true and what's not true and and bringing interesting guests we both do that a different point of view and just opening people's minds if nothing else i think that's the main thing is trying to get people to think outside of that box yeah the government want to put you in yeah and 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 that's a very laudable thing, I think. Just even if people disagree, I mean, I, so I always say this in the in the interviews that I do, or in the monologues I do specifically. I, I always say, you don't have to agree with me, and that's fine. I'm not asking people to agree because that would be a very boring world. Can't stand echo chambers. No, because that just becomes the same as what we're trying to get out of. Yeah, the, and and there there is another thing that, that I'm very much aware that YouTube, of course works in echo chambers that your audience are those that agree or t- generally agree with what you're talking about and they're pushing that out to the same audience mm. and and so that becomes very difficult then to reach a different audience well we know that youtube are really echo chamber based because that's why they keep pulling certain videos because it goes against their echo chamber yes i mean i suppose if you work in say i don't know what gardening you you'd probably only put your videos out to gardeners, not those that are interested in wrestling. Mm. Um, uh, so I get why they would go after a certain niche and only anybody who sh- who's watched a, a gardening video might go, oh, you might want this. I can get all that. Um, but it's also useful from, from you know, any anybody might want to do a bit of gardening. So th- presumably there's always that chance that, people who are not yet into gardening or truth-telling or wrestling or whatever the subject is, would want to be introduced to it. So yeah. um, you'd, you'd hope that they would offer your stuff out. But ours can be so varied. Mm. Well, thing. this is it. That is the trouble. We, we, we try and cover such a huge scope of information from all kinds of different conspiracies. Yeah. To, and when I say conspiracies, I'm not talking conspiracy theories. I'm talking things which are happening and you've only got to open your eyes to see that it's yes. happening. Um, and, that, and sometimes that's just putting another perspective on it. I mean, yeah, you know, I yeah. mean, there'll be, we all know what happened in 2020 and we all uh, understand that the government wanted to offer a solution to that, but they were very anti anybody else having a solution. And all people like me and you were, were saying is there might be another way of viewing this. And, and, and guests come along to, to sort of put that forward. And it is challenging the narrative, the mainstream narrative, but that's a good thing, surely, because if the narrative is right, then people shouldn't be worried about it being challenged because the challenges will fail. Well, what's the old... I'll, I'll probably butcher this. What's the old saying? Something like, um, the truth doesn't mind being questioned. No, exactly, because the truth got nothing to hide. Mm. Um, so... So, yes, so here we are, two YouTubers who've been demonetised. This isn't sort of a moan because, you know, I know a number of people would just say, well, why don't you go and get another job? Um, and <laughs> that may be it. But but also, it's more than that, isn't it? Because there are a lot of experience, we've got a lot of interesting things that we want to say, and I suppose you're looking for other ways. Now, I've had people approach me and say, um, we'd work with you with affiliate links, but they're the most inappropriate um, type of things. I've had people mm. with these up, you know, these stand up and lowering de- desks, people, all sorts. I'm, I'm trying to think of the most obscure things, but really obscure things. And they write to me and they say, I've watched your channel. I think it's great. You'd be that you'd be a perfect fit for us. And then it's it's like, I don't know, 
um, mole collecting or something, or um, you know, antiseptic for dogs. Or I don't know. I'm making this up, but it would be the most inappropriate thing. And you think, oh yeah, sorry, we interrupt this program now to tell you about this mold that you can get for your doorstep. It's very nice mold, and you'd want it everywhere. And buy it from Ktel, only nine ninety nine. Sorry, <laughs> exactly. now back to the show. And it was just, it's really mm. bizarre. Yeah, well, that's it. Well, that's why I've always tried to. I mean, my channel last month was sponsored by an, an organisation called the, well, Cabby for short, um, and that is the, oh, I've forgotten what it's called now, how bad is this? Oh, this is a good sales speech. No, it's the Community Assembly of the British Isles. Right. And so they are very much in line with what, with what you're doing. we spout out. Yes. So, you know, that works together because it's, like you say, you're not jumping from conspiracies to look at these dog biscuits exactly you know, yeah absolutely and you in, do it's in keeping and you do see quite a lot of youtubers who have to make that bridge between a very difficult subject that they're, they're talking about and then the next thing it's a very it's it doesn't really fit with their brand at all nice. and that does seem very weird, weird and all the time youtube was offering their advertising revenue at what small percentage it was i didn't have to bother with that but now it's like oh have i got to go down there and will people carry on watching if you're interrupting the pro i hate adverts. well this is why I've, i mean because youtube will stick adverts in your um material regardless yes but like this, when i did run the sponsorship things it was always at the beginning yeah and then it just goes straight in and that'd be it yeah no, it's well. I'm I'm hoping this gives people an idea why sometimes it's very difficult running a channel because if you're dedicating your time to it and you're doing the research, I mean that's the other thing. Where do you get all the guests from? You have some wonderful guests. Um, thankfully, many of them reach out to me um, because obviously I'm not going for A listers or B listers or even C listers. A lot of the guests that I choose to have on on the whole, are just everyday people yes. who have an experience that they want to share. Yes. Um, because I think that's important because at the end of the day, it's, we are the people and so their stories are probably more important to me than what's been spouted off in the mainstream. Yes. No, I, t I, mean, I totally agree. And, and I, I, people put themselves forward or in the past I've seen somebody on another uh, show and I've asked, but I tend not to go for the big, ones in this subject because they're on every other podcast mm. mostly or they've got their own show and I think well they've mm. got enough coverage it's the people who who you don't hear about who might have you know a bit of um, health things we do a lot of health things obviously and bioresonance and I've you know you think oh I never heard that not seen that on anywhere else and then you put it on and you start to understand it or somebody will send me a book and I'll try try and read the books um, uh, before the show begins um, and then we'll talk about that. But it's not principally about selling their book. It's about the subject, yes, which the is sub the most the important thing. Um, but all of that negotiating, finding holes in the diary or, or you know, trying to... It all takes time. Oh, it does. It takes a long time. Even the editing, I mean, I'm sure you're probably quicker on your system than I am. But, you know, I record the podcast or the video. I then have to sort the dubbing out because there's always lag and that just gets on my OCD. So then I have to correct all that. Then I put my overlays, any additional footage that to back up what the yeah. story is, whether it's newspaper clippings or just clips of a video. So yeah, a, a three minute video can take in excess of a couple of hours to edit. Yeah, and then my broadband speed isn't particularly great. So then it, a, a, a typical podcast usually takes about two hours to upload. Right, does it? Gosh, I'm I'm very lucky here. Then I suppose it, it doesn't. It does depend. It might be an hour and a half. It depends on how big the file size is. Mm. You know, six or seven gigabytes, and it's sort of you know. Watch, I just leave the machine. You can't see it, but there's a computer here which is actually under the desk and a screen here, and I just leave it running, and you go off and do something else. And then, and then it, there's all the thumbnails that you need. Thumbnails. To do. You're supposed. They recommend you're supposed to spend at least half an hour doing a thumbnail. I did mine a, do you know I get so many people now coming to me saying hey Richard I can do you and improve your thumbnails your thumbnails are crap but I can do some really good let me do them and to be honest I, I don't really want anybody else faffing about with my mm. thumbnail not because I don't think they're any good at it but it's just 
I want to get the thing when I want to do it. I want to do it now and I can do it and I want to get it up and I don't want to wait for somebody to send me the thumbnail mm. and then also, approve you, it. But also you've got a good fan base now. Yeah. So and they know so they recognize yeah. your th- they recognize your style. Yeah. So why would you change that? Exactly. Um but but there's a, I mean I also get people saying, "Oh, we'd like to edit your videos. We'll edit your videos and all of this." And and just think, well, actually I don't do a lot of editing. Well, no. <laughs> because I do a monologue, which is straight to camera. And then if I've, I've got a guest, it's on Zoom or it's in the studio. And as you can see, I'm pressing buttons as I go. It's one file. Yeah, that's it. But also, you're, if you allow editing to go out with the constrictions that you've got on YouTube, you have to make sure that what yes. goes out is okay. Is okay. And and that then can you know and then if you were banned or demonetized from an edit that somebody else did, you're going to feel quite resentful, and unless you have to watch it back and approve it. I mean, at least, at least you're owning it if it's yeah, on you, isn't it? Ex- absolutely. Um, so you know, if I get knocked off YouTube because of our conversation today about YouTube, uh, I've only got myself to blame, and no one else. Um, well, or you, of course. <laughs> So this isn't really supposed to be a whinge about YouTube or, uh, you know, because let's just put the positive side of it. YouTube is a great platform for kittens, kittens, box reveals, unboxing, which is why I've started my second YouTube channel, which has got nothing to do with what I do. It's just music. Right. So it's Um, I mean, it is free to use. There are its terms and conditions. And for most people, when I was doing the Bald Explorer, I never had a ban, never had any problem. At sometimes copyright music that I had bought mm. would be challenged and they'd say, well, you can't have that music. And you would appeal against it and say, hang on a minute, I've just bought this music or I'm a member of a library for the music, a special mm. music library. And I would have those sort of problems, but it would be no problem because I'm walking around churches or the landscape or looking at heritage and things. But because this is contentious and we are in contentious times and there is another narrative than the mainstream one that we're being pushed and we're pushing the boundaries back and free speech is very important. That's where it has become very problematic for people like us because we are just challenging the norm. Yeah, that's that's all we can do really, isn't it? We just have to challenge. Yeah. And it's... And I'm sure you'll agree, we're at a place now where it's so, it's just not nice putting a video together thinking, no, and you're having to be your own thought police. Yeah. You know, we are in 1984, be under no illusion. Yeah. Um, and so it's really difficult knowing what videos to put up, um, what you need to edit out because it's always that on the fringe. Can I get away with that? Because, you know, there's YouTubers who've got videos up from years ago now having those videos pulled. Yes, well, I'm always worried that my back catalogue is uh, likely to be, um, messed, you know, something in some way. I'll say, well, you can't say that now. Because it does seem like the terms and conditions change. Mm. And then AI or however it's done is is going through it. And you think, oh, any day now the channel could vanish. Yeah, yeah. It's always, it's always in the back of your head, isn't it? Yeah. Admittedly, there's not much else in the back of my head, but that is always in the back of the head, and yeah, it it, it doesn't make it particularly pleasant. No. So what? It, so I'd like to end on a, on a positive. I mean, yes. we've been talking um, about the the sort of perils of of trying to get alternative content out, and I don't want this to 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 appear that it's just a moan, although it sounds. A well, bit it like... kind of is, is a moan, but we're just also trying to make other people aware what we have to go through yes yeah um, in, order, in order to put out what we put out yeah you know because it isn't all really plays plain sailing no exactly but so because we're both now demonetized um or defunded i like to call it rather because mm. i realized looking at the words demonetized means that it's you are demon demonetized demon yeah and 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 in a way you know when when people don't pay you for something or they, they put you as an outcast, that does make you a bit of a demon. So mm. that's an interesting thing. So I just call myself defunded from them. But that doesn't mean I'm not defunded from the lovely audience, fortunately. No, and that's and, good. But um, what, what other alternatives do you have for income? 
Um, I've started to busk, which is... Because you are a musician. Yes, yeah. guitarist. Yeah. Um, which is good when we've got the weather. Yes. But, you know, you everyone knows what the weather's been like for the last three months. Yeah. You know. And we're in times of, of a lot of tension with people being squeezed by their mm. utility companies and the cost of living and everything yeah, is all going up. Right. So it's not as easy then, I guess, to busk. Is it? Is it mm. going well? Um, when I have gone busking, it's been quite a positive experience. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Because even that, you know, it's not all about the money. It's about cheering people up on yes. a, in a miserable precinct where normally they just begin... You know, if you yeah. can put a smile on someone's face, that's worth a few pennies in the absolutely. In the hat. Absolutely, if you can alter somebody's mood, if they're sort of worrying about what they've got their life and and how things are, and you can cheer them up, I think that's um, yeah, very laudable. And and I've got a Patreon account, so people can get the interviews, the podcasts that I do, probably like at least a month in advance mm. to what it is on YouTube. Um, so that's another avenue but the key uh, the key thing is you haven't given up no i haven't given up um what doesn't kill you makes you stronger yeah and i think that we just always have to knock those get over those hurdles yeah and just carry on yeah no definitely and i think i think that's the important message for other people because people have seen us be defunded it other youtubers that you may be you know viewing and they've kind of gone oh you know oh we could be next Mm. And that that is the thing. And if you've got a, a list of your favourite YouTubers and you enjoy watching certain content and then suddenly it vanishes, that's a reflection, you know, that's changed your life a bit. Well, yeah, it has, because you're being told what you can and can't watch. Yeah. As adults, you're being saying, no, you can't watch this. Well, exactly. we're not minors. And and you can't form your your own opinion on something or you you can't hear Mm. an alternative and we know with the online safety bill that's again that is something that is trying to manipulate how you think about things yeah they're just tightening the screw from every direction aren't they yeah and i remember when that came out i said it won't be long before this show will not be there that i won't be able to voice my opinion whether you agree or disagree it doesn't really matter that that they'll come after us and i think as we get closer to some of the issues that is the case, but mm. it's that thing about well, until the channel is taken completely off, or there's not another place to go, we just keep going. Mm. That's all we can do. It's all we can. That's do. all we can do. Well, there we are, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I didn't want to make this too long. Uh, thank you, Chris. It's lovely You're to see you. Lovely by to the way. be here. And uh, lovely to be in the studio. Yes, there you go. Multi-million pound studio with special effects and loads of people in the gallery. Pub. What was that? Yeah, get off. Stop gabbling and get off. Yeah, I will. Um, As if only that were really true. Um, Actually, I like the autonomy of doing it myself. Do you like it? You know, nobody's telling you how to run the show. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Yes. You're your own boss. And and that's, you know, that's the nice thing. Anyway, don't forget to check out uh, Chris Brooks's channel, LSB. What does LSB stand for, for those people that are unfamiliar? Um, some people have said it should be let's save Britain, but then the reform nicked that. Oh, um, it's actually my daughter's initials. Ah, right, that's nice. That's yeah, because obviously when I started this, it wasn't a, my channel wasn't about conspiracies or news. It was about videos that I've created, music videos or whatever short stories. So it's kind of evolved. Yes. But because everyone now recognises LSB Film Productions, I don't see the point in changing it. No, no. Mine, I mean, mine used to be called The Bald Explorer. And that was because I was doing the heritage and landscape and I was a bald bloke exploring. And then I can still kind of get away with it. I'm still a bald bloke exploring what's gone wrong with the world. Yes. So, But I did change the name some years ago just to Richard Vobes and... Um, and so that's what it is now. Anyway, anyway, so don't forget to check out uh, LSB Productions. I'll leave the link in the description. At least uh, YouTube stopped me from doing clickable links. That's that's another thing. Yeah, so happened. I'm not there yet. Um, but uh, they will let you click YouTube channels. <laughs> so anybody else's content, you have to copy and paste and go. And I've and I've noticed that they shorten them so that you can't even copy and paste them unless you use something like. Um, is it Bitly or 
tiny URL. Mm. And so I've started to use tiny URL and that just fits in the number of characters before you, they cut it off. So it's a pain because when you've got somebody on the show and they've got something to share and you want to put their web page up, YouTube won't do it. I don't know, understand. It's, it's, it's all change. But anyway, there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Chris Brooks. Thank you very much, Thank Chris. Thank you. Enjoy your day. Until next time, I'll be back with uh, more wonderful guests and more of my uh, annoying monologues. But until next time, thanks for watching. From Chris and I, take care. Have a lovely day. Bye for now.